and yeah, we get we get our door knocked on all the time by sponsors, but you got to turn them away because you're, you know, the mission in general was set out to kind of put the viewers first. You know, I've worked with other businesses in the outdoor industry, and I, you know, Dan, I mean, a lot of them will put sponsorships first because they're running a business, and you know, I don't, I don't necessarily, I'm not knocking them for doing that because they got bills to pay, but when we started this we're like we're gonna flip that we're just gonna make content that that is valuable to people that relates to people and let the chips fall where they may you know and if we can find a way to make it work we'll make it work if if we can't then we're still doing what we love to do so that's kind of how we ended up here i guess yeah me and dan were actually talking about that um before the podcast earlier today um you know i got a few partners here and it's like buddies I've made over the, over the time I've spent with Dan. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, we're kind of helping each other out and, uh, yeah, you get offers from people. And it's just like, I don't know how people even think this is like, I don't know, you know, it's just, um, for what sometimes content creators get out of, of what, um, a company is asking for. It's like, man, that's pretty rough. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, you, my, uh, email is, is just filled every day with stuff, you know, electric bikes to trail cameras to everything. And what it boils down to is if it's something, you know, you really like and you think is a good idea for people, maybe you do something with them. But if you just jump yeah. for all that money and you jump into all that product stuff just to um, either be able to say, hey, I'm sponsored or that's just, you're not going to get anywhere. Nah, we always try stuff for you know, at least a year, usually more than a year. You know, if yeah. somebody comes along and they're like, Hey, we want to work with you guys. It's like, well, you know, if it's, if we all take a look at it and think that it's something that could be valuable to our viewers, we'll have them send us some product and then we'll just test it for like a year or two, you know, against whatever else that we're using at that time. And if, you know, because if we're, if it's something that we're going to use and we're going to buy ourselves regardless, then we got a lot of confidence in partnering with those those companies. Like Onyx, we used Onyx for a long time before we ever worked with them. And just, you know, that was just what, what we were all using to, to for our mapping at the time. So it was a good fit eventually when they came along. That's the great thing about YouTube is you're, uh, you're getting funded to make shows from YouTube. So yeah. you don't need that. Yeah. Back in the yeah. day when I started, a show to get on TV would cost you a quarter of a million dollars for a quarter. Right. You know, you got to come up with $250,000 to have a show. You had to sell it to sponsors where YouTube, you don't have to, you're right. actually making money just by putting it on. Yeah. YouTube ad revenue and stuff. And it mm -hmm. granted, you know, they, they sometimes will demonetize you and do some stuff that's frustrating, but we still make, we still make money there, you mm -hmm. know, enough to pay the bills and, uh, most of the time, as long as we don't get hammered too bad by them. And we haven't, we haven't that thus far. I mean, we haven't had too many bad issues with it. Just occasionally they'll flag one of them that doesn't make any sense, but you know, it's a global content company. It's not like it is absolutely nothing like, uh, working with a hunting channel. You know, it's the complete opposite end of that spectrum. It's basically global social media. <laughs> You never know who could run across your video on YouTube. You never know when they're going to, uh, when they're just going to stop showing hunting shows too and stuff. Yeah, we don't know. You, you always have to have something on the back burner. Yeah, that's right. Especially someone like yourself, you put all your eggs in, into what you do. Yeah. Yeah, we can. We have a bunch of different revenue streams that keeps us moving. Um, and none of them, not any single one of them is extremely big. It's just, there's enough stuff you know we got enough small buckets around us that we can keep them filled enough to pay the bills that also kind of that that also helps us mitigate that risk a little bit because if youtube drops out we still have enough other stuff going on that we should be all right and be able to make adjustments you know and adapt and change or do whatever do whatever we need to do and if i mean if youtube ever stops showing hunting content like it won't take long for something else to absorb all that content and you know start doing the same thing it's obviously not going to be as a big a scale but at least you have an outlet to 
Oh yeah, and, there'll always be places yeah. where where hunters can go and watch hunting content. That's not really my my major concern. My main concern is that if if hunters get booted from social media in general and social media still continues to be one of the main ways that the globe communicates, especially young people, then we kind of lose our voice with those young people. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that's what YouTube has shown to be is there's a, there's a lot of kids that we get watching our stuff just because they're, they, you know, I mean, every, every 10, 12 year old kid knows how to run YouTube. Yeah. Um, And if you're not on there, showing hunting content where you know where are they going to get exposed to it they're not going to go pay four dollars to go watch some show somewhere yeah else and download some app so anyway yeah. it's a good point or even just some exclusively hunting or outdoor yeah platform you know it's yeah. important it's important generation that you, yeah you got to keep in mind 